Now, we will begin creating the first of many pattern and adaptive families. From the file tab, pick new and then pick family. From the templates list, pick metric curtain panel pattern based. First, select the pattern grid and pin this and then toggle the pin icon on the selection toolbar. This will stop the grid from being selected as we build the pattern. Then from the draw tools, pick point and snap it to the midpoint of the default reference as shown. Back on the ribbon, pick set work plane and set the plane from the recently created point so that the Z axis is active. Then from the draw tools, choose circle and sketch on the active plane as demonstrated. Edit the radius to 200. Then just as we did with the stadium family, select the profile. In this case, the circle, then select the path, in this case the default reference line, and from the ribbon create form. Set the view to wireframe and continue building. This time we want to create a diagonal brace. So from the draw tools pick reference, then from the options bar enable the 3D snapping and connect the diagonal points. With that done, host a new point on the midpoint of the diagonal reference. Set the work plane to the Z axis of the new point and then draw a 2D circle on the plane as shown. Finally select the elements to create a solid. Revert back to hidden line and then save the family. Then load into project. To apply the pattern family, first toggle the pin selection options, then select the form as shown and use the divide surface tool to create the pattern grid. Reset the grid as shown on the properties palette. Reselect the grid and from the type selector, choose the newly loaded pattern family. Time to create another pattern family this time for the corners. From the file tab select new family and then metric curtain panel based template. It is possible to change the pattern by selecting the visible grid and then using the type selector to nominate a different pattern. Choose rhomboid. Revit has now updated the pattern grid. Repeating the steps for pattern families, first pin the grid and then from the draw tools, use reference to connect the points. Add a point at the center of the new reference line and set the work plane on this point to the Z axis. But this time, we're going to add a step. Add a second point directly on top of the first point. and offset this up by selecting the second point and then using the offset parameters on the properties palette. Now complete the frame by adding a model line from the draw tools. Pick the three point arc and snap this across the three points as per the screen demonstration. When set, select the model line arc and make it a reference line by clicking this box on the properties palette. To create the form, select half of the rhomboid shape, so two of the perimeter reference lines and the arc and click create from the ribbon. Then click the dome shape. To complete the family, do the same for the other half. Once done, save the family. On the file tab, pick save as, give this family a name, in this case family2 and then load into the host project. With the loaded family, zoom into the target areas, in this case the stadium corners, and now repeat the steps applied here. Select the void, divide the surface and use the properties to set out the grid. In this case I increase the number of grids along the V grid to 20. Then use the type selector to apply the loaded pattern. Once the pattern has been applied, there are a series of controls that you can apply. 
Here I rotate the rhomboid 90 degrees. Analyze the design under various graphic settings. Next, isolate the divided surface. I select half of the panels along the surface border, holding shift to add elements to an existing selection. When the selection is complete, click delete. I think this is really cool because it's possible to customize the pattern by deleting individual panels. Using the view cube, I can rotate around the divided surface to keep deleting any of the half panels. Use tab to select a panel and then while holding shift, right click on the mouse to rotate around the selected element. Continue working this way until all of the half panels are removed. This can seem like a tedious task, but it's a matter of preference and design. It's up to you. If you are following this tutorial step by step, pause the video until you complete the task. The host family is called family one, but so is one of the pattern families. I need to rename the pattern family to avoid conflicts and corruptions. To do this, I add an A at the end of the name. Once that is done, right click and edit the family. Remove the diagonal solid. Then save this family as 1B and load this into the host. Pattern 1B will be placed on the front elevation, just here, where we had initially edited the surface grid so that it looks like a border. Apply the pattern through the type selector and what we get is a structural rectangular frame. Three pattern families have now been created, loaded and applied. The stadium is starting to take shape with each additional detail. I recommend zooming out and from time to time spend time to assess your design and progress. Let's keep going and create another pattern family. Click family B1 and right click to edit. Save as family 3. Then select the solid and remove it by dissolving from the ribbon. Also dissolve the diagonal reference line. We are left with the square. Pick the top and bottom reference lines and dissolve these separately. You should be left with a parallel pattern. Zoom into the right hand reference and edit the already existing 2D model line sketch. Change the radius to 100. Then create the same 2D model line sketch on the opposite side. Remember the steps from the draw tools. Pick, point and snap this onto the midpoint of the reference line. Then set the work plane of that point to the Z axis and draw a model line sketch on that work plane. Select the profile and the path and create the solid. Do this for both sides. Save the edits and load into project. When in the host, zoom into the target area. We will use pattern 3 to detail the roof. Repeat the steps for applying pattern families. 1 was selecting the solid, 2 to divide the surface, 3 to edit the grid and 4 to apply the pattern. This time, with the pattern applied, the surface is transparent. You can control this from the ribbon by toggling the pattern button. Repeat these steps for the canopy flat section. This time, 
rotate the component 90 degrees. Apply this workflow to each side of the stadium. It is possible to select multiple solids at the same time to increase efficiency. So far, the entire roof has been created from one pattern family. But this also serves to show you how flexible pattern families can be. Now, use all of these tools together to see if you can apply the pattern to the remaining canopy. Use the YouTube speed toggles to slow the video down if you need to. Also note that this tutorial comes with chapters. Use these to backtrack if necessary. If you want to learn more about patterns and adaptive families or even stadium design in Revit, check out my stadium series playlist. It contains lots of helpful information. In this next section, I do some cleaning up. There are no new tools or workflows involved. As you have noticed, this is quite a long video for YouTube. So I have sped this section up to condense the video time. If you need to slow it down, you can do so here. The next part of the tutorial involves adding a pattern to the roof of the stadium corners. In the project browser, find Family 3 and then right click to edit. Before making any edits, save as a new family name. Because of the corner roof shape, we need to create a U-shaped structure. Start by dissolving the current forms and their associated reference lines. Then select from left to right over the points and use the filter to grab the curtain panel lines and then delete these. Then from the draw tools, pick reference and draw new reference lines to complete a U-shape with the opened end facing right and this will complete the path. Then pick the profile and the path and complete the form. Finally save and load into the host. In the host, zoom in to the target area. Once more, repeat the steps for applying patterns.
With the patterns applied, toggle the pattern button from the ribbon. Then repeat for the other side of the stadium. Use the view cube to rotate to the opposite stadium side and repeat the process to complete each corner of the stadium. This concludes part two. To watch part one again or to watch part three, check the links in the comments section or the cards at the end of this video. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching.